Please stand as you are able for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Christ. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with the tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a provision, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have come to call not the righteous, but the sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hands on her, and she will live. Jesus got up followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak. Well, she said to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion. He said, go away, for the girl is not dead, but sleep. He laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout the district. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise the gospel of the Lord. May the words of our lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight here today. Hey, sit down. Is this microphone working? No. Yeah. No. Yes. 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 Just I, I wasn't here where I was here. So I I'll stay here. I hate being behind uh, a lectern and I, I hate being up in the bonus things. I could much prefer to walk around, but if the microphone is is fixed, then I'm fixed. <laughs> I can walk around anyway. Now I want to first thing I'd like to do today is who can make a, a butterfly with their hands? Is there some are, some are better than others. Mine, I'm pretty poor at this. Have another, just try. Butterfly, butterfly. My favorite creature. Thank you. Thank you for playing along with me. Butterfly is one of my favorite creatures. A bee is another. Uh, and I have a sort of remembrance of it was at Muhammad Ali. And I dance like a butterfly and sting like a bee. So those, those are my uh, creatures. But today, I'm just going to recall the Lorenz butterfly effect. And that butterfly effect is that when in the Amazonian jungle, a butterfly flaps its wings. Another event takes place in Europe. There's a hurricane sweeps across southern Europe. And it is the notion that there is a connection or a correlation between these two events. And that's something that we are reluctant to accept. Similarly, the butterfly may flap in the Amazonian jungle and the hurricane in the south, southern Europe may cease. So we, we're not necessarily saying causal effect. We're saying that there are effects that are connected to portions of art. Now, these ideas come out of the chaos theory, and they go to show how apparently unrelated events and people are in fact very closely connected. And the idea that there's an underlying connection between all things at the cosmic as well as at the molecular level. Now, 
in the Old Testament reading, and in Paul, and again the words of Jesus about remember it's it's not um, what to say I desire mercy, not sacrifice. The Israeli, the Israelites are being reminded that just being religious and not showing mercy is a serious matter. In Jesus' ministry, it was the religious of British people who appeared to be beyond the saving or the healing gift of God. They were they were the sort of they were the well people. So why would they need a doctor? So all this criticism about Jesus mixing with with uh, people un ungodly people uh, is really focusing on exactly what he wanted them to understand. So often religious people, including me, think that that, that that applies to other people, not to us. So it's important for religious people to get that right. If we don't get that right at the start of the thing, then we're not going to get the humility to convey the message of what the love of God is about. In the gospel today, we have a serious religious leader, Jairus, whose daughter is dying. Now, I read from another version of this, another, another um, gospel reading. Having heard of Jesus' actions, this man, this religious leader, is willing to entrust his daughter's well-being to this, this man, this rabbi, Jesus. How old was the daughter? It doesn't say it in this reading. But do, does anyone have a, a recollection of the of how old she was described to be in another gospel reading? No? Higher, higher. She she was twelve in one of the other gospel readings. You're right? I'm saying good. I do have this reading. Right. <laughs> so, so there's so what twelve was the number that was identified. I didn't pluck it out of nowhere. It's written down in one of the other gospels. And then we hear of this woman who has a bleeding condition, making her unclean in religious terms, and sort of a, a bit of an outcast certainly an outcast for religious people. And then just touching Jesus' garment was enough to bring her the healing that she longed for. How long had she been suffering with this problem? Now, I don't want to make a big deal out of this, but do you see the possibility? Could it be that we're talking about Jairus' wife here? Could we? Isn't that outrageous? No. Why would these stories be intertwined in them with this way in the Gospels, in the Synoptic Gospels, if there were no reason to connect them in some, in some dimension? As I say, I don't want to make a big deal out of this observation, but it's just for us to see possible connections in people and situations. Maybe her bleeding was something connected to her daughter's birth, something which had caused serious dysfunction within Jairus' family. Here we have Jesus, the healer, recognizing how one crisis is deeply connected to the other. The woman, and he called her daughter, called this woman daughter in this, addressing her. Show, she showed the depth of faith which brought healing to her whole family. Life is right now. Often our illnesses and our dysfunction are connected to the stresses in our earlier life. Though we crave healing in the present, yet let's get rid of this headache. It's necessary to open up sometimes the wounds of the past and acknowledge the pain there so that we may receive the healing we need in the present. We are deeply connected to the person we were years ago. And our pain in the here and now may be directly the result of some trauma 
back then. For us to grow spiritually, it is important to come clean about our past. Not, not, not shouting it necessarily from the rooftops, but to make space for that to be discharged from our present lives, allowing our, ourselves to recover from past distress so that we may enjoy our life in the present to the full. And that's what Jesus promised us, and that's what God's will is for us. To him who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than anything that we might ask or think. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations ever and ever. Amen.